I'm pleased to be joined by Ohio State head coach Ryan Day. Coach, how you doing? Doing great, thanks. I'm always appreciative of your time. I wanted to start with this, Coach. Uh, how does it feel to not have to go through a quarterback derby in 2022? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, this is actually the second time, I think, maybe in my career where we've had a quarterback for uh, two years in a row. So that's exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been great. CJ's had a really good offseason. Uh, but it's also been good to have the other guys and build them up. And CJ and Devin both have uh, had good off season. So looking forward to having a good preseason with those guys. It is a stacked quarterback room, as it seems that it has been since you arrived at Ohio State. What do you keep telling the guys to keep them engaged? Well, I think it's, it's about the development. And that's we take a lot of pride in that, that uh, every day we're going to challenge you with uh, you know, a really good scheme, you know, teach you about defensive structure, teach you about uh, you know, route progressions, and, and, uh, and we're going to have you, you know, part of a great scheme. And uh, it's very quarterback friendly. And so uh, you know, everybody's developing every day. And, and uh, a lot of it has to do with what goes on in the meeting room, but a lot of it has to do with what goes on in the field. CJ's a known commodity now. Uh, didn't really know what you're going to get out of him until Minnesota and then steadily progressed. And we saw him in the season as a Heisman finalist. What's the next step for him? Well, you know, this is year two. And at this point last year, like you said, he'd never thrown a college pass. So we didn't know anything about CJ. And then he kind of found his way and found his stride about midway through last year and then really played some great football down the stretch. And so I think the thing for him, you'd probably would say is just the fact that you know, he was just trying to complete his first pass, trying to get us for everything was new. Everything was first. Uh, that's not going to be the case this year. Um, and, you know, when you're doing that, you're just so focused on yourself. Excellent leadership skills always has. But I think after a year of off season and, and leadership work in the weight room, he sees it from a bigger view now and sees it from the defense and the running game and the line and, and obviously, you know, in the pass game. So I think when you take that approach to it, it really helps you as a leader. I'm genuinely impressed with how you handled his uh, growth and really giving him room to just, hey, he's playing football for the first time in a very long time, hasn't been hit in two years, and you trusted him and you trusted yourself to get him ready. But on the other hand, I also saw these, uh, let's call them F-18s out there on the perimeter for you, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. And to those two guys' credits that went in the first round of this year's draft, hey, the kid, that's the one you need to be paying attention to. And then we got to see that in a tremendously big way in the Rose Bowl. Got to say, did you see that coming or is it always been there? What happened with Jackson Smith and Jibba to be that guy? Uh, it was always kind of there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think that first year, CJ and, and Jackson kind of worked together a little bit on the scout team and kind of got some uh, familiarity with each other. But Jackson's very easy to throw to. Guys, great body language, in and out of cuts, creates space. And so they, they have a good connection together. And um, so it's great to now have him in his third year, you know, take that leadership role. I think he's had a great off season. And, uh, and I think that whole room still uh, is going to be a strength of our team. Guy that helped you put together that room, uh, wide receiver coach Brian Hartline, has been absolutely blazing on the recruiting trail, but also in developing these players in a way that, frankly, haven't seen, I want to say going back to 2007, the kind of output that you've had, at least as far as the NFL is evaluating, what has he done to help you get better with wide receivers? Oh, he's helped, uh, he, you know, first off, credibility. He played at Ohio State. Credibility, he played in the NFL. Uh, and, and he wasn't someone, I mean, he had speed, he had good athleticism, but but a, a big part of his game was just understanding how to play the game, mm -hmm. understand how to set up receiver, uh, set up DBs, uh, how to run routes, you know, his preparation. And so uh, that really is a great uh, makeup for a coach. And so I think the guys really recognize that and he has credibility with them, but he's also very gifted. He, he really understands how to recruit, uh, how to connect with people, uh, works really, really hard. You know, sometimes when you make that transition a player to coach, there's a little bit of a transition, just an understanding of how much, how many hours it takes, how much work it takes. Uh, he, he made that transition pretty quickly and uh, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. Defensively, uh, I've been high on Jack Sawyer because it's, it's hard not to be knowing what he was capable of at Pickerton North. What's the step for him in that defensive line this year? Well, uh, I think our D-line is going to be as deep as it's been in a long time. Um, I think, you know, when you look at them line up in that first game, they'll look a lot different than they did last year, and that's the goal. Jack's really done a great job with his body. He looks strong. He's had a really strong offseason. So is JTT. It's going to be great to have Tyler Friday back. Mm -hmm. Zach Harrison looks great. Uh, the guys inside. So 
Um, that's that should be a strength of our team is the D line. But it's it's fun to now watch Jack into a second year, and uh, it's time for him to take the next step. I think for some of those guys, you know, in year two, year three, they were still inexperienced. You know, you say, well, they were two or three years in, but with COVID and everything, they hadn't played a lot. They gained some experience last year, so now they're veteran. And whether it's the second year or the third year, if they played a lot of football. In, my, in our mind, they're veteran, and Jack's one of those guys. So even as a second-year guy, I think you'll expect to see some veteran play out of him. For the second time in, I think, the last six years, uh, it pops some eyebrows around where I live, about Tulsa, Oklahoma. First, Josh Proctor, now identifying Jim Knowles to lead your defense. What led you to Coach Knowles? And uh, to that end, having Tanner McAllister, how does that help you? Well, uh, Jim uh, is somebody I've followed along his career for a while. Uh, he's been around some really good defenses, mm -hmm. and, and when you follow his career, he's, he's very, very intelligent. I mean, talk with people who have worked with him and for him, uh, just really, um, you know, great things to say about who he is. He, he has a great teaching mentality just in terms of understanding how to teach young men. He's got a good mentality in terms of attacking offenses. And, um, you know, I think when you combine that with a lot of experience coming back on defense, you know, we're, we're hoping for really good, strong defense and having great, you know, balance within our team. Adding Tanner McAllister as a part of that, is that yeah. an offensive or excuse me, a defensive assistant on the field for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been in that, that system for a while. Mm -hmm. He knows it. And so he can really help with those guys. And, um, you know, we also have Matt Guerrero, who uh, was mm -hmm. defense coordinator at Duke, took over for him when he was at Duke. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an analyst for us, but he's, he's also somebody that was in the system before. So you got a couple guys there that were in the system. That really helps. Because, um, you know, when you're bringing in a new system, whether it's coaching the coaches or Tanner on the field talking to the players, uh, it helps to have other voices out there. I'm curious, as a fan of football, watching it from an offensive side, when you go and look at a defense or a defensive coordinator, are you evaluating yourself and going, I don't know what I would do against that? Or how do you, as an offensive-minded guy, identify a defensive mind? I think the first thing you do is you look at how, how hard they play mm -hmm. um, and what kind of energy they play with. Um, and I think that's the first thing. What kind of technique do they play with? Then you look at the scheme, you know, and you try to figure out how they're attacking defenses and how quickly can they adapt based on how an offense is going to attack you, you know. And I think when you look at Jim, he does a pretty good job early on in the game of trying to figure out how the offense is attacking him and then being able to quickly pivot to what he thinks can help and, uh, and adjust in game. I think that's very, very important. But a lot of that has to do with the teaching up front is that teaching the system of defense and knowing that, okay, if this is what happens, our contingency plan is to go into this area. And uh, when you've, you know, he says, like, I put my 10,000 hours of football into this thing. And when you have that type of experience, you can draw back upon those things as you get into those games. A little bit broader, if you allow me, Coach. Um, you have a couple of teams in L.A. that all of a sudden want to play Midwest football. How do you feel about that? I'm excited. I think it's great. I think it's great for the, for the conference. You know, we're now a national conference, and that, that's big. It gives us a lot of juice and energy and, um, and a lot of power. So uh, I'm all for it. I, I think it's great, and uh, looking forward to playing those guys. My last one for you, Coach. Open-ended. Please take it any direction you would like. How do you feel about the future of college football? Uh, kind of how I felt the last couple of years, uh, which is like you, you just drive it without brakes. You know, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's coming next. And I think the easy thing to do is get frustrated or, or, you know, worry about what's coming next. The best you can do is just try to do the best right now and today and just try to do what's best for your program and try to put them in the best position you can um, because you just don't know what's coming next. And, uh, again, when you, if you said to me, this is how the first four years of your head coaching career is going to be at Ohio State, I would have never believed you, you know, because there's just so many things that have come up. But they're going to continue to happen, and it's going to continue to come up. So being able to adapt is critical. The Ohio State head coach, Ryan Day. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.